Get ready for an extraordinary experience as you tune into this inspiring sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman. The words you are about to hear carry the power to renew your spirit and ignite a fire of faith within you, guiding you to a new level of divine breakthrough. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I tell you, I sense a very strong impartation that is about to happen. But I have to give you these three keys. Activating the gift of sight. What does it take to activate this blessing? Ah. Nizambika. Nizambika. Kainegaskia. Nizambika. I want to hand to you now. I want to show you how to activate the seeing eye. Number one, praying in the spirit. Write it down. There is nobody who invests quality, consistent time praying in the spirit who will not receive this gift of the seeing eye. Whether you misuse it or not is another thing. But as far as seeing is concerned, it is a grace that goes with praying. Show me a man that has committed himself to the ministry of prayer. I show you a seer indeed. Praying in the spirit. And when you begin to pray, the spirit of God starts to search the mind of the father and downloads for you the things that eyes have not seen the things that ears have not heard the things that have not come into the heart of any man invest time praying and see what happens to your dreams and visions invest time praying and see what happens to your creativity and intelligence and your imagination invest time praying and see what happens to you as far as the capacity to draw insight from the word. Invest time praying and you will show me, I will show you the prophetic activations that happen in your life. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? A worship minister who only sings and does not pray, when they sing, you will know the difference. You will know that this person is just singing. I don't care how nice the voice is. You will know this person is just ad leaping and just singing. There is a stability that your prayer life gives every other thing you do. A businessman who prays, the difference will be clear. A career person who prays, the difference will be clear. A man of God who studies scripture and prays, the difference will be clear. A worshiper who prays, when he sings, the difference will be clear. There are many people who raise songs and you almost feel irritated. You're like, please just finish and go. Because there is no presence. There is a sound that your prayer life gives everything that you do. You cannot fake a genuine prayer life. It's not by the huskiness of your voice. 
Uh -uh. There is a presence, there is a stamina, there is a confidence, a stability that comes from within your spirit. For someone, God is fanning your prayer altar. Ah, you need it, you need it, you need it. It is connected to your eyes. Your prayer altar is connected to your eyes. Your prayer altar is connected to your eyes. Yes, sir. You want to do end time ministry? Five minutes prayer, 10 minutes prayer, save Johnny. You will reverse by yourself in shame. You want to see, you must learn to pray. Generate energy as you pray in the spirit. Yes, sir. Male and female, educated or otherwise, when it has to do with the gift of sight, ladies and gentlemen, it is connected to a rich, consistent discipline of the prayer ministry. There are many people is in the place of prayer that certain melodies will come in the spirit. You will start hearing sounds. You will write them. It's in the place of prayer that certain sermons that were not even rehearsed, scriptures will come to you. It is in the place of prayer that the 10 year plan of your destiny will be downloaded. Sometimes you will pray till you fall asleep. That sleep was not slumber. It was Adam's kind of sleep because something needs to come out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, laziness in the area of prayer is a cancer that would destroy many Christians. You must obtain grace by the Spirit to be a man and a woman of consistent prayer. I'm talking of moments where you invest quality time. You are not asking, not tea, not bread. You are just traveling. It's a cruise in the Spirit. And the flesh may be weak, but you are still gaining ascendance. You will hit an escape velocity in the spirit, and the heavens are open, and you will start receiving things. Something happens to your mind, something happens to your understanding of scripture. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Listen, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of praying in fluent tongues. Well, I'm praying you receive that impartation. But you see, one of the reasons why we designed our prayer department is an opportunity. There are people who have been trained, mighty anointed men and women who will administer the baptism. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for Pentecostals. It is not for charismatics. It is one of the manifestations of the hidden wisdom of God. He said, but we speak this wisdom among them that are mature. Not the wisdom of this world that comes to naught. Nor of the princes of this world. He calls it the hidden wisdom of God that was ordained for our glory. He said, you shall receive power. Acts 1.8. In Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. There is a relationship between that which you utter in the spirit and the opening of your eyes and the gift of sight. Is someone learning? The generation that knows how to pray with understanding will be a seen generation indeed. Tremendous insight in ministry. Tremendous creativity by the spirit. Number two, very quickly, activating the gift of sight. What is the second key? Meditation. Meditation. Rich moments where you meditate upon the word of God and then meditate upon scripture-based resources. You can meditate upon the word of God, but you can meditate upon scripture-based resources like sermons, like materials that are word compliant. It will prime your creativity. You can be reading a leadership book and see one line. Leadership is about transforming followers to leaders and leaders to agents of change. You will stop there. The psalmist will often say, Sila, pause and think about it. Most people do not understand meditation. Meditation is not witchcraft. 
I'm not talking about this devilish thing that people do. To meditate means to think and to ponder using the power of imagination. What is God saying? There are times that I sit quietly with worship playing and I'm saying, Holy Spirit, breathe upon my mind. What are you saying now? And sometimes it will take a while before his voice comes. In that silence, here it comes. This is what Koinonia must do for the next season. This is the series I want you to step into. These are the anointings I'm releasing in this season. When we look like we are mighty, it is simply because of the advantage of the power of sight. The grace to see ahead of time. Meditation. You open your scripture, you read, and you begin to meditate. Let worship play. Lord, what is the next thing about my life? And sometimes you need to be still, then you will know that he is God. There is a kind of knowledge that follows stillness. Be still, and then you will know. Miracle service is next week, Sunday. Part of the ways that I prepare for the miracle service it's not just to pray. Sometimes I'm lying down and a dense atmosphere of worship and I'm quiet. Your majesty, speak. What do you want to do in the lives of your people? What is your emphasis for the people? Don't ever assume with God it will cost you. Always stay and say, Lord, what are you saying? Speak for your servant heareth. And sometimes he will open your eyes and give you insight into what he's doing. That there will be people who will come for that miracle service who have been tied down by spirits. And you will see it. And you will say when you get there, don't just do what you want to do. Become a voice of deliverance. Hallelujah. You believe in this? Sometimes it's in the place of meditation. I told you, that's how the song Breathe came. That's how this song, in fact, this song, I think, I hope I'm right on that. I think it came in the place of worship. Just worshiping and then this chance come in the spirit. By the spirit of the living God and your life becomes a sign and a wonder. First to you and then everyone around you. Ladies and gentlemen, practice meditation. Sometimes, as a businessman, shut everything around you and sit down. There has to be a way out. Spirit of the living God, what is the next five years going to look like? What is the next ten years in this industry going to look like? Ah, then the one who gives you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, he comes to you in that stillness. <laughs> he breathes upon you. And reveals to you the next 10 years. Reveals to you the next 20 years. There were many things that we had the opportunity to do as a ministry. But every time I went to the Lord. He would just be silent over it. Or he will say it's not yet time. And I said that's it. This is your ministry. This is your vision. No matter how uncommon and unusual it is. If you say it is not time. It is not time. Someone called me one time and said, Apostle, do you have an idea of people who have been writing books in your names? Books that have almost sold five-star ratings across several platforms. I said, that is wrong. So why don't you just quickly write? And I go to him, your majesty. No, it is not your time. The foolishness of seeing will make you a champion, mysteriously so. You will do things that are unusual, but with them will come power and transgenerational impact. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is how God has helped us as a ministry. This is how God has helped many who have learned sensitivity 
please write it meditation meditation you can get sometimes word-based confessions sometimes you can get scriptures on tape designated scriptures are, are along certain areas and just allow them play sometimes it's worship like the strings playing like this and you're just soaking in that glory when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. Sing it one time. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Listen, my dear people, let me teach you a secret. Every time you are granted the opportunity to go and minister, don't just stand up and write songs blindly and go and stand and start singing. It's in that secret place. The Spirit of God can arrange songs, songs that you have forgotten. This song connects to this. This one connects to this. When you now have the opportunity to minister, you will come up with a, an arrangement that will so impact the spirit of the listeners. How did you join this song with this one? It came in the place of meditation. In the stillness when you stay with the spirit, destinies are altered. You will hear sounds in the spirit. God will tell you this plus this is what equals this. As a businessman, once you stay meditating, here he comes. This is the next phase of what the world is doing. Go ahead of them by doing this one and doing that one. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, the third and final way you activate the gift of sight is through impartation and that's what you are about to receive yes sir it is a grace that can be imparted Ephesians 3 9 when the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. I want you to please read aloud the first six words that you see count them in your mind before you read the first six words are you ready one to read please and to make all men see one more time one more time there is a grace that can make not some men all men see all men can see depending on the grace that rests on them all men may not see visions but all men can have dreams many can have visions all men can have access to supernatural insight of scripture all men can have insight to creativity and intelligence at an extraordinary scale and all men can have access to prophetic activations the word of knowledge seen in the spirit extraordinary supernatural experiences this is the heritage of the saints and within the next two to five minutes as instructed by the spirit of god i want to impart this grace i told you there is a gift 
that God wants to give someone. To make all men see. To make all men see their future. To make all men see what God is saying. To make all men see his program. To make all men see where their wealth is. Just because everybody is running there. You may run there and your wealth is not there. To make all men see what business to do. To make all men see what dimension of ministry you have been called into. To make all men see where your helpers are. Esther, to make all men see where Ahasuerus is. Naomi, to make all men see where Boaz is. To see where your victory is. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. I'm not wasting your time. Your life will change remarkably, believe me. Remarkably. Can I tell you? The gift of sight will also let you see where the problem is. It can show you where the problem is. This backwardness in this family, where is it? What is the root of this tragedy that has tied down men, tied down women, tied down great people? It is not only to see the future. You can see the origin of tragedies and to correct them. Who seen that this man was born blind? Himself or his father? And Jesus said, neither. And those who are following online, you are about to receive something miraculous and marvelous. Miraculous and marvelous. The gift of sight. The seeing eyes. He said, blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Because the word of God is the clearest revelation of his will. So before I pray for the sick, there must be an understanding. I don't need to recite it to his hearing. It's a consciousness. What is the basis of that person getting healed? Is it consistent with the will of God? That is how I know. Not by feelings. I don't have to feel anointed. This is an issue of integrity here. So I know that it is God's desire for that man to be healed. And now I can pray for that person believing that the power of God will follow his will. Can I tell you, many believers have their lives in shambles because they do not respect the will of God. So they cannot see the power of God. They are fasting against the will of God. They are praying against the will of God. It's him. Jesus said, Father, let me show you Jesus. The greatest manifesto of the power of God, if it be thy will, or he said, take this cup off me. He says, nevertheless. Ah, because if I find myself in disalignment to your will, I can no longer be called the word of God. I hope he knew he was tempted in every way. So he could have lost that status as the word of God. He was not just called the word of God because he was a word incarnate. It was because he ensured that his life was always in sync with the will of God. Now he had a chance to be thinking differently from what God wanted to do. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Nevertheless. In fact, here's what he said. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish it. Can I tell you? The greatest people who will manifest the power of God in this end time are those who will pay the price to know the will of God. Looking for power is useless until you understand the will of God. Because the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God. Then to execute the will of God to make it happen. Hallelujah. Is it God's will for me to prosper? 
I check from scripture. If that is true, then I know for a fact that there must be a dimension of his power allocated for bringing that will to pass. It is now my assignment to find out. I'm not in doubt. It is no longer will God bless me. It is finding out how. Every time, listen, oh dear, do we have time? I have to give Pastor Jerry room to come and preach. But let me teach you something. The moment the will of God is about to come to pass in your life, watch this. The power of God will also depend on the wisdom of God. If the wisdom of God is not revealed, the power of God cannot work accurately. Watch this. Please listen to me. It is the wisdom of God that guides the operation of the power of God to make it manifest profitably. The Bible says to the Greeks, Christ is revealed. Christ, the anointing, is revealed as the wisdom of God and the power of God. So when God wants to help a man to truly walk in power, even if you pray for power alone, it's two things that will arrive in your life. Power and wisdom. Wisdom is what gives value to the correct use of power. Are we together now? Because the dynamics of operating power is that until you have wisdom, you cannot. Let me show you, then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 2, please give us from verse 16. Paul is praying. Let's see the content of his prayer. Ephesians chapter 1, in fact. Verse 16. 1. Chapter 1, please. Ephesians 1 and verse 16. Can you give it to us? Thank you. He says, I cease not. He's praying now to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. What is the content of the prayer? 17. Help us media. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. The Father of glory may give unto you. What is the first thing? That whole journey will end in power. But he said he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Next verse please. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Number one. Number two. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Shout verse three together please. Ready one to read. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. The Bible says according as his divine power have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness but the administration is through the knowledge hallelujah wisdom the wisdom of God is very powerful many people have prayed for power but they have not prayed for wisdom so they have the power but then they are not able to manifest power and authority because there is no wisdom do you know that even if elijah elisha prayed over the woman remember the woman in in uh, second kings now hallelujah the wife of the sons of the prophet do you know that even though he prayed for her if he had spoken prophetically over her and there was no wisdom she still would have remained in debt it was the prophetic word that made her to even go and find vessels to borrow in the first place if he did not prophesy nobody would give her any vessel it was not a product of her creativity and then she comes and he gives her a strategy that is wisdom now i've released power up for multiplication but the power depends on vessels capacity you see this is the reason why those who are not enlightened if you impart power over them they will look like they are fake because the use of the power is not with wisdom have you seen somebody with all due respect manifest power and somehow you, you are you are there is no wisdom gives beauty to the use of power are we together now yes it is the mistake if you study the history of the church in nigeria this was the mistake many fathers with all due respect to them some dead and have gone to be with the lord they prayed and they accessed power but many of them did not access wisdom through the word so they in administering power they brought many things that were prophetic experiences and made doctrine out of them because wisdom was not there to separate personalized dealings and things that were doctrines 
are we learning now so when you have the power of god and you have the wisdom of god you will manifest dominion and authority intelligently in a way and a manner that brings glory to the name of the lord let me do a recap and then we'll pray number one we define power as the capacity to influence outcomes we define power as the force that compels compliance number two we define authority as the right to represent the legitimacy to use power that if you do not have authority the use of your power is illegal as seen in the case of a military man and an armed robber an armed robber has power but he lacks authority why because there is no the institution that authorized him is not there cannot be identified and the jurisdiction for the use of his rifle is also not there i told you that authority is always jurisdictional and that jurisdiction is defined as a sphere the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal i need to recap one last time on very strong points that i made for your understanding number one that man does not have absolute power no he cannot have absolute power because his power is derived are we together only god has absolute power and in fact i did say that he is the owner of all power that's what makes him omnipotent it's an attribute of god that he did not share with man i forgot to tell you that it's not everything in god's nature that he gave man we are partakers of his divine nature but not every aspect of his nature there are dimensions of his nature he withdrew from man that's what makes him god his omnipresence his omniscience and his omnipotence these are the three attributes of god that brands him in a class all by himself man did not receive that one are we together this is very important then remember many of you were surprised when i made the statement that god does not have authority god cannot have authority the nature of authority i remind you is that an authority a person higher than you must confide upon you no god only manifested authority in jesus and that is because he became a man so we see him submit to john submit to simeon the prophet anna the prophetess are we together now because he was a pattern man a model for the believer as to how he will be walking with in authority he even said my father is greater than i yet we understand the triune nature but god cannot have authority if god has authority he must be loyal to someone i also told you that god cannot obey it's not an ability that he has who will he obey no obedience is not a quality that god possesses he cannot obey no to obey means someone outside yourself must give you the instruction and there is no man who can instruct him god does not obey and this is i wish i had time i would have taught you i think it's a mistake that people have made in the body of christ they command god and sometimes we say statements like we need to give god permission in the earth and i understand what sometimes preachers are trying to say but it's not exactly true no man gives god permission uh, what he does is partnership it's not permission if god does not seek your will and still does something he's still right because the earth is still is still his own are we together now yes he limited himself to allow man taste of the power of revealing his glory but when he walks with man it is not weakness it is allowing man to share in he, that glory are we together so he said if all men refuse to praise me i can ignore them and raise up stones and it is not illegal so if i want to pray for the sick now and god wants the sick to come and i don't pray and it looks like the sick are not healed it's not that god is limited is that he has bound himself to give man an opportunity to experience his glory also but it is within his exclusive ability to do anything with or without the permission of man because he has power without authority the person who has power without authority also does not have jurisdiction for the use of that power because god is not defined by any jurisdiction 
to the point that Paul talks about the possibility of tasting of the power of the ages to come. Who owns that one? Are we together? God is not restricted by time, by dimensions. He can go into your yesterday, your tomorrow, and he can bless you and speak over your life. I told you that one of the reasons why we believe God is not just that he has integrity, is because he's the only one who can speak like that. There is no other person higher than him to contend with him. So if you disbelieve God, it is proof that you suspect he's a liar. That somewhere there is someone higher than him and he's not telling you the truth. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Many believers do not understand the jurisdiction of their power. So we pray and we say all kinds of things and they never get answered. There is intelligence to the use of power. I didn't have the time to teach you on how the believer executes power because there is a we are given a code of conduct are we together there are rules of engagement for instance when you see a herbalist there is a way he's trained to use power he can look at you and say bring chicken bring this bring that now the believer does not act like that there is a way we release the power of God and one of the platforms I told you earlier on is in prayer. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Number two is by the use of the name. We can spend all night talking about that. The use of the name of Jesus is not the recitation of the name. The power is not in the recitation. The recitation only makes creation know that he is the one we are talking about. The use of the name of Jesus is first a consciousness of his exalted position. Jesus never had to use his name to say in my name. He only said in my name when he was talking to the disciples. So you can say in Jesus name and you did not use the name of Jesus. It is not the recitation, no. Otherwise the name will be a journey, some charm somewhere. It is a consciousness. A consciousness, the name is a capture of the office that has been given to him now. Are we together? When you say Jesus, his name was not even Jesus. I hope you know that. Yes. So when you say Jesus, demons do not, I mean, the J-E-S-U-S you are talking about, it did not exist many years ago in that form. If you go to Israel and say Jesus, they will correct you because the number one, they will say your pronunciation is wrong. And now begin to argue about the person you are talking about. There are footballers that carry this name. You call their name and see whether demons will go. So it's not, I'm not saying don't use Jesus. I hope you get what I'm saying. When we say Jesus, we are letting creation know that the force behind the results is the one exalted as Lord and Christ. But the name Jesus is not a person's name. The owner of that name today has an office. It is that office that the power comes from. Because demons can call Jesus too. But they do not understand the power of the office. The Bible says, And every knee will bow of things in earth, under the earth, and confess that Jesus has now become Lord. That is the name. The name is his lordship. It's an office of dominion. The earth is the why do you call me Lord, Lord? The moment you come to a revelation of his Lordship, you have found the key to the name. It's not the pronunciation of his earth work. The name Jesus was a name that was given to him. He would have been anybody. Joshua, he would have been Ebenezer, he would have been anything at all. Are we together? So when demons see you and you say, in Jesus' name, they look behind the speakings because the damsel said these are men who came to she was saying everything right but it was by a familiar spirit so when we say in jesus name we are saying that name so that for us and those who hear us we know that the the one whose office we're invoking is the one they know as jesus but it is a consciousness and when demons know you carry that consciousness of being exalted number one your oneness with christ number two your positional advantage 
not just that he's great but that you are exalted with him now then your shadows can heal the shadows do not call the name of jesus but the authority that is behind that name we have to stop rise up on your feet can we pray for a minute or two go ahead lift your voice and pray the believer given authority in Christ capacity to exact dominion upon creation go ahead and pray declare it upon your life I have authority I have power I understand the jurisdiction of my authority I understand the use of the power that the assignment of power is to birth the will and the purposes of God. Someone is praying. Are you praying for the next one minute? What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? What manner of man is this? I have power and I have authority, the legitimacy to use that power over creation against unclean spirits over situations and circumstances hallelujah one more prayer point and then i just speak over you and we are done remember now you have power and you have authority there is no fear to the one who has authority because the institution that conferred it upon you defends you and if need be they validate that you are not using it illegitimately are we together now yes it is God that gave you power and he gave you authority and jurisdiction. So when you speak over your life and creation and they refuse to obey, it is not your business again. The one who conferred the authority upon you for his name's sake, they hurt his integrity when they disobey you and he is forced to now use his absolute power without authority and force creation to hear you. Are you ready to speak over your destiny now? Now you know that you can speak and pray without fear. Why? Because you have power and you have authority. And remember, the modus operandi is that all your speakings must be consistent with the will of God. What is the will of God? His thoughts revealed in what he said. Genesis 21, 1. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said. He did unto Sarah as he has spoken. So everything you know that God has said concerning you, I call them exceeding great and precious promises. The Bible says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In one minute, walking on borrowed time, go ahead and declare over your destiny. Do not be silent. Inside, outside, online, go ahead and begin to pray. Declare, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life. In the name of Jesus, the head and not the tail, exalted above the nations of the earth. Someone is making declarations. Remember you have authority. Remember you have power. Remember you are praying within the jurisdiction of your authority. You are praying consistent with the will of God. There is a government above you that insists that creation, circumstances, your destiny becomes obedient. Take a minute to pray. The favor of God working in my life. Doors are opening by the Spirit. 
no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me falls in judgment. In the name of Jesus, I go forward. I walk strong by the Spirit of the Living God. His wisdom is at work in my life. His power is at work in my life. Is someone declaring in one minute? The year ends in victory for me. Thanks be to God, which causes me to triumph always. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even my faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Creation aligns itself to work out the purposes of God in my life. Man walk in partnership with the spirit of grace. Working out the purposes of God in my life. In the name of Jesus, everything I touch is blessed. Blessed by the spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you for watching. Like our videos, share and subscribe. Thank you.